Waco, Texas. They are number one in the nation in many categories, including scoring, yards per play, total offense at a whopping 715, passing yards per completion over 20. And how about this? The percentage of scoring drives that result in a touchdown is doing a lot of it in under 90 seconds, man. It's staggering what this Baylor offense has done so far, but as shining and blinding as this offense has been, as almost as much as those helmets, it's the ferocity at which it attacks the opposing team's defense and its end zone. They're not just piling up yards at record-setting pace. You see the frequency at which they run plays and the proficiency at which they score points. That has what has put the rest of the nation on notice that this Baylor offense, and incidentally, its defense is for real. And there's Baylor team, the highest-ranked Big 12 team this week for the first time in program history. It's pretty impressive. Now, for Iowa State, uh, this is a 1-4 in four team. Paul Rhodes' team has been snake-bitten, a lot of bad luck this year, and they've just been bitten by the injury bug. Yeah, when you think about the lack of returning starters that they had, they were tied for the second least in the Big 12 with only nine guys coming back on their roster, but it's the offensive front where it requires continuity and chemistry. Six different starting lineups already this season. Only one player and a redshirt freshman at left guard has started every game so far this season. That undoes any type of momentum you can establish on the offensive side of the ball. Always a great buzz when you come to a campus that's having homecoming, but especially this year here in Waco. For more on the Bears, let's go down to Don. Yeah, Clay, we've got a sellout crowd here in Waco. Just another sign of the transformation of this program under head coach Art Riles. Really, it's amazing to think that six seasons ago when he got here, the Baylor Bears were in the midst of a 12-year losing streak the speediness of this transformation has been amazing he's now coached a Heisman Trophy winner in RG3 he's taken Baylor to three straight bowl games and physically you see what he's built in this new 260 million dollar stadium that's going up now coach Bryles tells me a couple of the keys to the rise of his program one his teams always stay true to what they do and two he continues to innovate and think outside of the box guys we see that offensively all right done and this is indicative of, of what Art Bryles does. They won the toss, and instead of deferring like a lot of teams elect to do, he wants the football right away. They will receive, and we'll see this Baylor offense right out of the gate. Well, Art Bryles wants to set the tone for this ball game. Get out and jump out on top of these Cyclones. Incidentally, both of these teams emphasizing the importance of starting fast. For Iowa State, that's a function of just trying to keep pace with what Baylor is doing. For Baylor, they recognize that Iowa State, coming off a debilitating loss versus Texas Tech, of defense have faced a lot of plays. If they can jump out quickly, that's a quick way to take the spirit from your opposition and build the momentum that we've seen Baylor be able to accumulate throughout this season so far. Edwin Arceo has it on the team. Levi Norwood, the junior, back deep to return for Baylor. And it's actually Clay Ford that makes the catch in the end zone, and Baylor will start at the 25. Bryce Petty, the nation's most efficient passer through the first month and a half of the season, will bring the offense out close to 1700 yards on the year 13 touchdowns just one interception through the first five games it's remarkable it's very efficient as well and when you talk about the speed that this Baylor offense moves you need a quarterback that is willing to pull the trigger and knows with confidence that he's going in the right place with the football so far this season the numbers speak for themselves. Bryce Petty has been on target and generating yards in big ways. Empty backfield, five receivers to start, and they'll send one in motion. Fake the handoff, Petty complete onto the far sideline, and a pickup of about seven yards on the first play. That's a catch for Antoine Goodley, their big play receiver, second in the nation at 136 receiving yards per game. They waste no time, second and three. They're gonna run it this time. And it's Goodley, and he's pushed back. Good defensive play by the Cyclones, led by Scott. Goodley Scott, the defensive end, the most veteran member of that defensive front. Hey, we talked with defensive coordinator Wally Burnham yesterday. He said, we have to stop the run with only five defenders in the box. They're gonna use movement in the defensive front to be able to accomplish that. Third down and three. And it's complete, Tevin Reese. First down catch, they'll move the chains. 
This offense, 56% on the year on third down, and they've had just seven three and outs and 73 drives this year. When you look at them, nobody punts a fewer amount of times than Baylor. It speaks to how effective they are in picking up first downs when they aren't making big plays. Now they've got their first first down. Now Petty sets to throw again. It's another strike. Good lead. The catch. Slips a tackle and gets out to the 45-yard line. You know, Clay, going back to that previous third down conversion, it's important to note Wally Burnham, the defensive coordinator of Iowa State, and these defenders recognize Baylor's going to pick up yards. What they have to do is keep the offense in front of them. Play fake. Incomplete again intended for Goodley, and he was bumped by Nigel Tribune. It'll bring up third down and four as we take a look at the impact players. Well, that's going to be offensive-centric when you think about it, but the idea is when you see Baylor play, it's on the ground with Lake Seastrunk, who can take one to the house at any time, and Antoine Goodley, who we've already called in the perimeter passing game, who will also clearly contribute on the ground in rushing attack. Petty and this offense taking a little time off the play clock. And Lake Seastrunk gets his first touch, and he is dumped for a loss on the play. A loss of four, and Rodney Coe, the defensive tackle, credited with the stop, and you don't see this very often. Going to bring out Spencer Roth, who might have the easiest job in college football as the Bears punter. Well, on the two design called runs that we've seen from Baylor already in the Spencer opening Roth series, Iowa State do an excellent job of getting upfield and penetrating this Baylor offensive backfield. Baylor had some difficulty with the physical aspect of Kansas State's front last week. Baylor wants to run the football ineffective in this opening drive. Just their 13th punt on the year for Roth and Jarvis West on the return for Iowa State. And it's a good one. To midfield. And into plus territory at the 45. The reigning Big 12 Special Teams Player of the Week. And Iowa State's in business. And Jarvis West. He kept him in the ball game last week for Iowa State with a big kickoff return for a touchdown. He's not a big guy, but you can see how elusive he is and shows he's got excellent vision, and that's how you earn recognition like becoming a special teams player of the week. You have to see the field and exploit those gaps quickly in the return game. So 37-yard return. He had a 38-yard return last week against Texas Tech. And also that kickoff return for a touchdown. Now Sam Richardson, his first pass play incomplete intended for Tad Ekby. That's just a drop. Ekby, the number two receiver, can't haul it in for Richardson, who has been playing hurt this year. A right ankle injury since week one. Also dealing with a sore groin and a jammed thumb, among other things. Hey, I mean, you think about Sam Richardson, the walking wounded. This is a gritty football team, and it's embodied and personified by their quarterback in Richardson playing through injury. Several of them that would obviously impact his ability to run the zone read and even deliver the football accurately. Penalty flag. A false start on the clones. False start. Offense, number 70. Five-yard penalty. Second down. You talked about it, Stinch. These clones need a fast start tonight. They can't hurt themselves. Well, they got it on defense, but what they can't afford after a big return, excellent field position, is to get behind in the down and distance. That's something that offensive coordinator Courtney Messingham said. We have to keep it third and manageable. Second and 15 is not the way to do that. Out of the gun, the snap from Tom Farney out to Richardson. It's complete. Out to Clinton Bunridge. Another big play receiver on the field tonight. Well over 100 yards receiving against Iowa and Texas this season. And Baylor will try to bottle him up here tonight. A minimal gain, so it's third down and fairly long for the Clones. Here comes that crowd. It's a sellout on homecoming. Iowa State okay on the year on third down, just over 40%. Play clock inside of 10. Richardson. Cox fires. Tipped and incomplete. Out of the hands of Justin Coleman. The transfer from Nebraska, Omaha. And that's going to bring up fourth down. As one of the best punters in the country will come on and try and pin Baylor deep. Well, and speaking with Phil Bennett, you know, offensive defensive coordinator rather for Baylor, he recognized 
that uh, you see a lot of times Sam Richardson feels the rush and he looks at the rush. They're going to heat him up in those third down situations. But Iowa State's got a weapon at punter. Sometimes it's not always a bad thing to kick the ball away. Kirby Vanderkamp, the senior. Great leg. Has great hang time. And unfortunately for the clones, he puts it in the end zone. And Baylor will have it at the 20 as opposed to inside the 20, which Vanderkamp has done 83 times. Welcome to ESPNU College Football Primetime, presented by Five Hour Energy. Clay Matvick, Matt Stinchko, Don Davenport back here in Waco. Both well, teams have had a possession. Now Baylor ready to go back to work from the 20. This Iowa State defense, last in the Big 12, allowed 447 yards per game. They looked good on that first series for Baylor. They did exactly what they needed to do, get that Baylor offense off the football field. Missed assignment by Baylor up front and penetration due to the line stunts that so far Wally Burham recognizing that he can use that defensive front to get up field and disrupt what is a very potent rushing attack for Baylor. They gave up 666 yards last week at Texas Tech and faced 101 plays. Burnham's defense was gassed last week. It's a bend but don't break approach and so far they haven't given up a ton of points this year. Just a lot of yards. Here's Seastrunk pushing that pile across the 25. That's a six yard pickup for Seastrunk, the former Oregon Duck, averaging 10 yards per carry. It's pretty remarkable when you think about that, but when you think it's also the offensive front's proficiency in blocking. Seastrunk again, and Rodney Coe will bring him down short of the first down mark. It'll bring up a third down and short. You know, we asked Wally. Is he going to employ that three down front that he used versus Texas Tech so far tonight? They've had four down linemen and then the lone second level player, Jeremiah George, and they've slowed down Baylor on the ground. This is Glasgow Martin gashing the Cyclones. That senior bulldozer brought in on short yardage situations, but he can rip one off too. That's a big gain of 15 yards in a first down. At that time, just a missed tackle by Jeremiah George. We touched on him. He is the lone second level player if they get covered up at the line of scrimmage. Play fake. Petty. Out to the near side. It's Jay Lee Lee, the sophomore receiver. Big guy, 6'2, 215, a gain of five second down. You can see Iowa State, though, willing to afford cushion to the Baylor receivers to keep them in front of them and then closing on the pass. Thrown out to the flat. It's Levi Norwood, and now he's going to throw it to Jay Lee. Big play inside the 15, down at the 11-yard line. Jacquez Washington, the free safety, burned by the double pass. You can see it was a clearly a backwards pass, and Sam Richardson coming up to help in coverage. He came off of Jay Lee, who slipped behind. Back to the ground, Martin. Down to the six-yard line. Going back a play, Levi Norwood, the son of Baylor assistant coach Brian Norwood. That's a pretty good pass, good touch. Yeah, it was a great touch. I mean, uh, uh, nothing else, just hanging up high enough to where nobody can tip it because Jay Lee was by himself in the second game. Baylor in the red zone. Knocking on the door, it's Martin again. Art Bryles says this man is tough and mean. And a broken ankle back in the spring. This is just his third game back. And now it's third down and goal. Third down and three. They can pick up a first down at the one. Petty looks to the end zone. Cuts loose. Cut. Antoine Goodley, touchdown. He's got a touchdown catch now in seven straight going back to last year. Actually took a while tonight, Stinch, for them to get on the board for the first time, but they get it done. You think the Baylor fans here for homecoming are probably starting to get a little bit nervous. What's taking so long to get into the end zone? But it was that double pass that sparked this offense. Iowa State letting the one thing that they didn't want to have happen a Baylor off offensive player get behind them. Jay Lee was enough to get him downfield. Aaron Jones, his 150th straight, made PAT, which leads the nation. And Baylor 
Goes eight plays, two minutes and 19 seconds. Their average scoring drive, 124. I don't know what took them so long, but the Bears are up 7 0. ESPNU College Football Primetime is presented by New Raspberry 5 Hour Energy. Available for a limited time. Get yours now. And in part by Nissan, premier partner of the Heisman Trophy. Homecoming week in Waco, Texas for the Baylor Bears. Hard to get a seat at a restaurant in town this week. The Bears 16-1 here at Floyd Casey Stadium since 2011. Let's go back to that last touchdown that put Baylor up 7-0. We see what Baylor does is they bring, they've got trips to the short side of the field, and it's like a clear-out play in basketball. You've got one-on-one -on -one at the top of the screen with your best receiver, right. Nigel Tribune, trying to defend what's a double move, and that's a perfectly thrown pass. There's almost no way that you're going to be able to defend that. Bryce Petty putting it right on the money. Aaron Jones, the kickoff. Jarvis West back to return. It's actually Albert Gary. And that short kickoff gets it across the 25 as we go to the studio and check in with Matt Schick for the first time. Thanks, Clay. We've got some offense out in College Station. Johnny Manziel missed some time with an injured shoulder, came out of the locker room, led him to a touchdown. Trailing, now they're leading 41-38. He's accounted for five touchdowns. Auburn, though, inside the Aggies 10, Clay. All right, thank you. Another chapter written in Johnny Manziel's book. Just an additional drama of, of a potential injury, even. He's got a flair for it, the comeback and the dramatic. Iowa State started at the Baylor 44 on its first series and had the punt. They started their own 26 here. It's E.J. Bibbs, the tight end, catching Richardson's pass. Lamont Dixon, the safety, making the tackle. It's going to bring up second down and about four as we take a look at the impact players for Iowa State. Well, we haven't called his name, but Aaron Wimberly at the running back position. They're going to want to get him going. Part of this is a possession game. The other is Tom Farniak at the center position. So much turnover in their offensive front, and he is their most tenured and best player. He's even been nicked up this year as Wimberly gets the carry. Balls on the ground. Is that live? Yes, it is. Baylor says they have it. One official is going to overrule another. This is going to be Iowa State football. Yeah, to me, it's, it's... on the field was a fumble recovered by the defense. You know what, Clay? I think that Blankenship's hand... It's not Blankenship, right? I'm sorry. It's Bonds pokes that ball out right before Wimberley's elbow would have established him down. That's a great call by the official. There was confusion between the, the officials. Fumbled the ball, was covered by defense. Previous play is now under further review. But ultimately ruled a fumble on the field. So the play is under review. A replay official from the Big 12 is Don Capral. And we'll be back for a result. 8.42, Baylor appears to have recovered this. Visit WatchESPN.com or download the Watch ESPN app to watch ESPN live anytime, anywhere. Brought to you by Vizio. The ruling on the field was an Iowa State fumble recovered by Baylor, and after the review, it's going to stand up. It's Baylor ball at the Iowa State 29. Byron Bonds stripped it. Eddie Lackey, the senior, recovered it. And Baylor has forced two or more turnovers in nine of the last 12 games. It's what the Baylor defense does. Turns you over. And versus this team, it's what the Iowa State Cyclones had to avoid. So far this season, they protected the ball very well, but not so far in this game. Play fake, lobbing it down the middle of the field. There's Petty caught by Tevin Reese. And he takes it inside the five-yard line. His nickname is Sweet Feet, but his hands are impressive. Well, he couldn't afford to have scored right here because all his touchdowns so far this season have been 40 yards or more. Seastrunk 
into the end zone. A quick two-play scoring drive for the Bears as they capitalize on the Cyclones' turnover. Two plays, 14 seconds. Quick change, this Iowa State defense that played so well in the opening series. A double pass that opened the gate on the first scoring drive and then a turnover. And this Baylor offense doesn't need any help with short fields. Aaron Jones bangs home the extra point to make it 14 to nothing. The fumble by Wimberling. Recovered and turned into six. It's 14 nothing Bears on homecoming night. A sellout here at Waco, and it's 14 to nothing as these fans have been treated to another fast start by the Bears. Baylor hasn't lost since last November at Oklahoma. They're trying to match a 77-year-old program record with a 10th straight win and trying to set a new team record with a 6th straight Big 12 win. Albert Gary from the 15-yard line. Good return across the 30 down at the 32. ESPNU has some SEC women's college soccer coming up on Sunday at 3 Eastern. Texas A&M looks to extend its six-game winning streak over Georgia in SEC regular season play. Women's college soccer on the U at 3 o'clock Eastern. Speaking of Georgia, lost to Vanderbilt today in football. Well, special teams, you can see it can play a huge role. Injuries, obviously. Hurt in Georgia, but a couple of a muff punt on the reception and then a high snap. And Vanderbilt getting a landmark victory this season. They've struggled so far this year. Maybe the biggest game ever in the ACC, ready to get started at 8 Eastern tonight. Florida State and Clemson as Richardson takes off. Good run to the 41 yard line. Because of all those injuries we talked about earlier, his mobility has been slowed, especially running that zone read, but he looked pretty nimble there. You know, talking with the coaches, they say he's a lot niftier of a runner, to use their word, than what you've seen. And you're right, he's been slowed, hampered, a lot of lower body, body nicks. That and the fact that he's not getting clean to the line of scrimmage. His offensive line mates have to do a better job of keeping their core back clean. Second and one, Chantrell Johnson. No game. There's Byron Bonds again, the true freshman out of Allen, Texas, has been active here in the first quarter. You know, as many snaps as they play on defense, it was key for these young guys to step up for Baylor up front. They'll try to get it again on the ground, and again they're stopped short. Chantrell Johnson dumped this time by Bryce Hager, the middle linebacker, the leader of that Baylor defense. And here comes the punting unit. You can see that Iowa State able to get into a third and short yardage scenario. Coach Rhodes has talked about this season, though. We talk about the turnover on the offensive lineup, the offensive front, and it's hard for them to work well together, and Baylor exploiting gaps in their blocking scheme. Kirby Vanderkamp, good punt. It's going to go out at the 22-yard line. Good kick. For the All-American, 38 yards. Baylor has it first down and 10 as we check in again with Matt Shook. Thank you, Clay. Exciting game in College Station. Auburn down by three. Here's Trey Mason with 90 seconds to go. He gets in. Texas A&M facing a fourth down in Auburn territory. We'll keep you posted. Huh. Again, Johnny Manziel suffered what appeared to be a shoulder injury earlier in this game but he's made a comeback and that one is not over yet not that far from here in college station jay lee with the catch uh, looks like he is going to be close to another baylor first down they're not going to waste any time getting up over the football that's why the big 12 has added an official this year to keep up with these up-tempo offenses second down and about a yard c strong Going the wrong way, and Luke Knott, the younger brother of former Cyclone All-American, 
Jake Knott makes the tackle. Again, penetration, you know, so far, Baylor, they've made their yards, but it's been in the air. And so far tonight, anyway, their run game has been bottled up by the five and six defenders that Iowa State has left in the box. Second and 13. Petty, all kinds of time. Tevin Reese streaking up the sideline, has the catch. Out at the 31-yard line. A 39-yard reception for Reese. He's averaging 122 per game. Well, that's the challenge. Really get into a personnel with a tight end, and they sneak another player in the box, and they hit you for a big pass. Now here comes Seastrup. Stiff arm. Can't get away from the tackle of Jacquez Washington, the senior captain for Iowa State. And it's a two-yard gain, second and eight. Well, Petty knows exactly where he's going with the football and delivers another strike. Well, Baylor, they think he is. Don't have your quarterback thinking. Don't think, just throw. Hole up the middle, Martin. Knocked down by Washington. It'll be third down and manageable. Seastrunk, Linwood, Martin. Good running backs for these Baylor Bears. This time it's Martin, and he's got a first down. That's the thing about Baylor. A lot of people might be surprised how balanced this offense is. 414 passing coming into the game, 301 rushing per game. Yeah, they've never been that far out of whack. They were in the 50% range last year. Petty, incomplete. Intended for Clay Fuller, a guy they're waiting to emerge here in this Baylor offense. Junior from Belverde, Texas. Petty, 8 of 10 for 104 yards already. Penalty flag in a moment to catch our breath. Ball start. Offense, number 54, five-yard penalty, second down. Second Baylor down. last in the Big 12 when it comes to penalties, almost nine per game. What's that a feature of? Uh, part of that's just a function of running a ton of plays. You know, going into Kansas State last week, Baylor was second only to Texas Tech. They were running 81 plays a game. You're bound to have more penalties like that. Pressure off the edge. Petty gets rid of it toward the end zone. Contact, penalty flag. Goodly. Interfered with Jared Brackens, the Sam linebacker, is going to be called for the pass interference. You could talk about a mismatch of Jared Brackens out there on Goodley. You know, look, rather than give up a touchdown, I don't think that was panic. Pass I think that was intentional. Defense, number 14. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Brackens a converted defensive back playing A.J. Klein's spot. He's now with Carolina. He's got speed, but he doesn't have goodly type speed. And when you get in the end zone, they'll give up the score, just disrupt the pass, and if it's a penalty, so be it. Live to play another play. First and goal for Baylor, leading 14 to nothing. Glasgow Martin, senior from Round Rock, Texas. Picks up three. Second and goal. Glasgow Martin he probably would have done well to follow Big Cyril Richardson. All 340 pounds of him, or he bangs his head on the goalpost if he does. Ninth play of the drive. Baylor has already run 24 plays. They average 76 per game. Something to pay attention to in this ball game, noting how many snaps Iowa State saw last week. Martin bottled up. It'll be third down and goal to go. No game. That's what we're talking about. Cyril Richardson, I think he's playing on Sundays next year. Follow that guy. Well, he's trying to duck up inside. The hole was outside. Glasgow Martin does a good job in these short yard situations. That time he just missed the hole, otherwise it was six points. Richardson coming back for his senior year. He could be a top 10 pick this year as Norwood makes the catch inside the five yard line then gets folded in half by Jeremiah George who leads the Big 12 in tackles per game at over 10. Washington also there. So now fourth down and goal and the field goal unit comes out. I'll tell you what that is. That is a victory of sorts for Iowa State. They came out hot on defense. 
slowed Baylor down in the opening possession. Since then, due to a turnover, due to a big play on a, on a double pass, the defense unable to keep Baylor out of the end zone, but this time, to hold them to a field goal gives this defense a chance to come up and catch Aaron. Aaron Jones from 22 knocks it home, so it's 17-0 late in the first quarter, and another upset in college football this weekend. Let's go to Matt Schick. Yes, Clay, the upsets continue, and they continue in the SEC. Fourth and long, 18 seconds to go. AM needing a first down or something, and they get nothing. Johnny Manziel is sacked. Auburn and Gus Malzahn get the win 45 41 at College Station, Clay. Wow. Thank you, Matt. You and I have seen a couple of Auburn games in person this year. Grant, Mason, Marshall. This is a great looking offense right now under the new head coach, Gus Malzahn. Well, Gus Malzahn, you know, who was obviously the previous offensive coordinator, one year removed, goes to Arkansas State, has an excellent run there, gets a year of head coaching experience, and then he returns to the Plains to a familiar roster, and re he has reinvigorated that program. And let's not forget also his defensive counterpart, Ellis Johnson. Yeah. Well, that defensive unit is playing night and day different from it did a year ago. Meanwhile, here in Waco, Texas, Baylor, large and in charge here late in the first quarter at 17 to nothing. Well, there you could see Paul Rhodes a few seconds ago coaching up Jared Brackens. This Cyclone team has been put through the ringer already this season. A lot of young players, inexperienced players, a tough schedule. He's just trying to coach Rhodes, keep his guys' heads in this ball game. Gary backs up, lost it in the end zone, and he'll take an E. Touchback. 13 unbeatens coming into the day. UCLA losing today. And earlier this week, Louisville lost on Thursday night to Central Florida. There you see Baylor on the list. Missouri. A big win today over Florida in Columbia. And you look at it, you know, Missouri's got an opportunity. I think if Baylor takes care of business in this ball game versus Iowa State, they're a top 10 football team when the polls come out, first BCS rankings of the season. The Cyclones offense trying to get something going, catching it in the flat is Wimberly. After the grab picks up nine before Hager, the middle linebacker, brings him down. Wimberly, a Juco transfer, he has given the running game a lift since making his first start three weeks ago. And he's also a good receiver for Richardson. And they're going to use him in the receiving game to get him the ball out on the perimeter because of their difficulties up front, quick passes, let Wimberly get out there in space and make something happen. Second and one. Wimberly, first down. When we talked to this Iowa State coaching staff this week, Matt, they said we had one of our best weeks of practice since Paul Rhodes took over at Iowa State. Even though they've had some tough luck, these guys are emotionally healthy. Yeah, they're plugged in, and that's a credit to the coaching staff to keep this team in it through the injuries, through the close defeats. They're still playing hard for Coach Rhodes, and you can see it as evidenced in their play. This is a gritty squad. Richardson. Steps up, pocket collapses, he gets away from a potential tackler, and sashays out of bounds after a three-yard gain. Hager there to escort him out. So to bring up second down, Paul Rhodes in his fifth year as head coach. His clones have recorded a road win over a ranked team three years in a row. And this Iowa State team upset Baylor last year in Ames, so it can be done. Absolutely. Two years ago, they affected the national championship race, beating Oklahoma State, opening the door for an all-SEC national title game. And it's an uphill climb already down 17 to nothing with a minute and a half to go here in the first quarter. Play clock down to three. They get it off. Richardson sprinting up the line. Now he's going to turn and run. Nearly stripped to the football by Andrew Billings, but holds on as Billings, the freshman from Waco, brings him down. It's a gain of five, and it'll bring up third down in about three. I'll tell you what, there's the niftiness that we talked about, though, that the coaches were promising from Sam Richardson. He's still not healthy. Chantrell Johnson wanted the pick so badly. Richardson wisely held on to that football, giving him an opportunity to convert a third and very manageable. Iowa State over two on third down tonight. 
Richardson, complete. First down catch for Albert Geary. He's out of bounds at the 45-yard line. Of Baylor, Ahmad Dixon, the safety, ran him out. Dixon sealed the win last week at Kansas State with an interception late in the fourth quarter. That was a real test for the Baylor Bears in Manhattan last week. They were lucky to get out of there with a win. Well, Baylor hadn't been in a second-half game. I think they'd forgotten the football games are to be played in four quarters, not two. <laughs> Uh, they didn't show up in that third quarter. Had a lot of difficulties on offense as well. Under 30 seconds to go in the quarter. Richardson swings it again. Caught at the 42 by Gary. And again, Dixon forces him out of bounds. About a yard and a half short of the first down marker. Florida State and Clemson. About 15 minutes away from kicking off on ABC. Now, this is what Iowa State's going to have to do some in this ball game. Baylor's willing to commit to the line of scrimmage, commit to the box, and dare you to throw the football out wide. You see, their defenders, they crowd the line of scrimmage. Everybody, look at this. Within seven yards of the line of scrimmage, nobody's deep. That's the end of the first quarter. Iowa State will not get a playoff before the quarter comes to an end, and everybody comes up for air. Iowa State does definitely need a cleansing breath after they get down 17 points to this highly caffeinated Baylor offense. 15 minutes in the books here on homecoming night in Waco. Number 12, Baylor leading Iowa State 17 to nothing as we get started here in the second quarter. But Iowa State won last year in Ames. Cyclones quarterback Steel Jantz hit 10 different receivers that night, including Jarvis West, who had seven catches for 99 and three touchdowns. With a minute remaining, Baylor had their star quarterback, Nick Florence, ready to go, but he threw an interception, sealing Baylor's fate. Jantz had a career high five touchdowns that night. And this was the last time Baylor was held under 30 points in a game. 35-21 was the final. And part of that was a function of the time of possession. You know, Iowa State, they had the football for two-thirds of the game, almost 40 minutes, incidentally, last week in the most hotly contested game that Baylor has seen this season versus Kansas State. A similar scenario. Kansas State just kept Baylor's offense off the field. Second down and two for Iowa State to start the quarter at the Baylor 37. They run it. Johnson. Looks like he stopped short. And it's going to be third down for Iowa State. You see there the yellow line. That's not official, but it's pretty close. That's what Iowa State needs to pick this one up. They've only had two first downs tonight. Well, they converted a third down in the passing game, but third and one. This is where this makeshift offensive front, one where they've had to flip-flop tackles. Brock Daigle, backup right tackles, their starting left tackle. They've got to create some push here for this Iowa State offense out of the pistol formation. Chantrell Johnson cuts it up into a hole and picks up the first down to the 33-yard line. Johnson, neck and knee injuries the last couple of years have really limited his career, the senior, picks up a much-needed first down there, a gain of four, and the clones will move the chains for just the third time tonight. Well, the steadiest player that Iowa State has had on their offensive front, Daniel Burton with the key cut block on the back side. Give Johnson just enough space to pick up the first. And Burton just a freshman, a redshirt freshman out of Oklahoma City. Aaron Wimberly, nothing doing. Runs right into the teeth of that Baylor defensive front. Jamal Palmer who backs up Chris McAllister on the end, makes the tackle. No game. You know, we talk about how aggressive Baylor is on offense. It's a pretty aggressive defense. You know, they're going to stay close to the line of scrimmage. They're going to come after you. They want to stop you quickly. And if you beat them, then they lose quickly. Either way, that offense is right back on the football field. And so far, the Bears' defense has been much better than it was a season ago. Second and 11, Richardson sets up the throw, and now he is going to be dunked. Sean Oakman, 6'9", 270-pound sophomore, the stud transfer from Penn State. 
A sack and a loss of seven. Third down. You see Iowa State. No flip-flop. Their tackles that time. It was Kyle Lichtenberg's turn at the left tackle spot. And when you look at it, Oatman, all 6'9 of him, how much of a rush does he really have to get at 6'9? Just reach over the tackle's shoulder and grab the quarterback. That time he got just enough push. And even Richardson, who's mobile, couldn't feel the pressure from the backside. Third and 17. Incomplete. And what was once a promising drive for Iowa State stalls out after 11 plays. And they'll bring on Kirby Vanderkamp for the third time tonight. 83 career punts inside the 20. A 45-yard average. He was a semifinalist for the Ray Guide Award last year. Good hang time. Drops at the 10, covered at the 5. A 34-yard punt. And Coleman downs it at the 5-yard line, a long field for Baylor. Well, it's not all offense for Baylor. The defense with the turnover and shutting down an Iowa State drive. ESPNU College Football Primetime. Brought to you by the Discover It Card. It's a game changer. And Bud Light. It's the sure sign of a good time. Here we go. Construction of the new $260 million Baylor Stadium, which opens up in 2014, located on campus land just off I-35 on the Brazos River. 314 days till it opens up. It's going to seat 45,000. Petty from the end zone complete to Tevin Reese. Great effort at the catch to pick up the first down. There it is. It's within eye shot of where we're at right here at Floyd Casey Stadium. Antoine Goodley and Tevin Reese out there. And it's Reese again, and another first down. And just think, Stitch, this was almost impossible to think that Baylor would be in this position in a new stadium being built to boot just three years ago. They were selling out Sky Suites, VIP Suites. They wanted to build a new stadium, and they didn't have that kind of money coming in. The ball was knocked down at the line. Second down at 10. Jeremiah George batted it down as Bryce Petty took a hard hit. Jeremiah George is coming on a blitz. He's going to be very careful that he didn't go high. Bryce Petty maybe saw that a little bit, trying to draw a flag. George, you got to be very careful when you're hitting up high. Any of these quarterbacks, any of these defenseless players. Penalty flag. Glasgow Martin, the run. And about five yards to bring up third down at five, but we'll see what the flag is about. Glasgow Martin, ball carrier. Dan Romeo is our referee tonight. Offside, defense, number 50, five-yard penalty, first down. It's Willie really Scott, the defensive end, second penalty against Iowa State. There's Wally Burnham, fifth year's defensive coordinator for the Clones. After 48 years of coaching, not much intimidates him, but when he popped in the Baylor tape this week, he admits he was a little scared looking at those receivers. Well, you look at their size and speed and just the sheer number of options that this offense has. I mean, Coach Burnham, it was great speaking with him the other night. He's seen a lot of football, and a lot has changed in his time. He's been able to put together some pretty stout defenses. This is quite a challenge here tonight. Seastrunk still on his feet, first down. That was athleticism. Out to the 43-yard line, a gain of 11. Wally Burnham started coaching football in 1965. He's 72 years old, but Paul Rhodes says he's got more energy than anybody on that Iowa State coaching staff as more flags rain in. Ball start. Offense, number 25. 
Five yard penalty. First down. And when you run at this pace, that's going to happen. Baylor with a false start. Uh, Strong trying to get rolling a little bit. You know, Iowa State, Wally Burnham talking about, you know, trying to stop the run with numbers, trying to get enough to finish in the box and almost ask Baylor to throw the football. You have to pick your poison versus this offense. Seastrunk. Get a chunk of it back. Rodney Coe. Defensive tackle brings him down. Second down and nine for Baylor. At their own 45-yard line. They lead it 17 to nothing. Under 11 minutes to go before halftime. The draw play to Seastrunk. And now it's third and manageable as they go to the ground to get a bunch of that yardage back after the penalty. You know, two of those of the last three carries we've seen from Seastrunk, I think you see that he's not just a space runner. He has power. He's not a big back, but he finishes runs. And on that run there, he picked up another yard and a half after tackles had surrounded him. And now a timeout, Baylor. Offensive coordinator Philip Montgomery and Art Bryles using their first time out of the game. It's 17-0 Bears here in the second. Ten twenty-seven before half, 17-0 Baylor. Let's take a look back with our tire rack drive recap back in the first quarter off the Aaron Wimberly fumble for Iowa State. Baylor turned that mistake into points just two plays later. And that's how fast they operate, and it's Seastrunk taking it in to make it 14 to nothing. And Matt Seastrunk was held to 54 yards on 12 carries last week at Kansas State. That snapped a streak of eight straight 100-yard games. He's getting back in the saddle here tonight. Nine carries, 32 yards in that touchdown. A lot of them on this drive, though, I mean, largely, Iowa State has done a good job of bottling up what is an explosive run offense, one of the most explosive run offenses in the country, Seastrunk. He's averaging basically a, a first down every time he touches the football. And this time it's Glasgow Martin there. Short yardage back, picking up the first down. Six foot, 200 pounds. That's his job. Goal line and short yardage. Play fake on first down. Going up top. Petty. Caught. Antoine Goodley. That's all you got to do is throw it up to these guys. They'll make the play. Baylor comes out. And they're in 11 personnel. There's seven men in the box. There's no help. Sam Richardson's by himself versus Goodley on the perimeter. 42 yard play. Now Martin. It's a down to the two. Second down and goal. Not in Washington on the tackle as we go inside 10 minutes before half. Nine plays, 93 yards on this current drive. They haven't been scoring quite as quickly tonight, but they're still very efficient. A little bit more deliberate, too, when they get into the red zone. Want to make sure they capitalize on their opportunities. Oh, fumble. Petty recovers, now making his way toward that far sideline, and he's tracked down from behind. Jacquez Washington making the tackle for a loss of two on Bryce Petty. You know, we talked with Art Bryles yesterday, and you know, as well as Bryce Petty has played this year, somewhat surprisingly, you know, they continue in this succession of great quarterbacks. But Coach Bryles said he hadn't played perfect, and I expect him to play perfect. I think he can. I think one aspect of it is ball handling. You know, Bryce Petty, he's had a couple of fumbles. They haven't lost many, but they put the ball on the ground 12 times this season. Third and goal. Oh, incomplete, juggled by Goodwin. The back of the end zone, Sam E. Richardson was beaten on the coverage, but Goodley can't haul it in, and the field goal unit will come out for the second time tonight. That time, that's on Goodley, as good of a receiver as he is, and you know, Wally Burnham will take it. He says, look, to keep this offense out of the end zone, Obviously, they need to get on the scoreboard as well. They want to keep them off the board completely, but three points is a heck of an exchange versus this Baylor offense versus six. 21-yard field goal for Aaron Jones. He had two makes coming into the game. He's got two tonight from 22 and 21. An almost touchdown for Antoine Goodley. As it happens, it's a 12-play drive and 317 results in three.
Big week for BCS Countdown presented by Vizio. The first BCS standings of the season will be released Sunday night. So the guys are going to have a lot to talk about. This is the last year of the BCS system because next year the college football playoff begins. BCS Countdown, 8.30 on ESPN, then at 9 on ESPNU. 7, 8, and 9 have all lost. Texas A&M, Louisville, and UCLA going down this week. Well, so then who's waiting to make the jump up? You know, you've got Missouri who's sitting at number 14, obviously not in the BCS, which hasn't come out yet as you just discussed, but Baylor and Missouri are both sitting there poised to make the jump into the top 10. And South Carolina was at 11. They lost today to versus Tennessee. Short kick off the foot of Aaron Jones. Albert Gary running up, makes the catch at the 25. And Iowa State. We'll start at the 35-yard line on this series with 8.53 to go before half. And a lot's going to have to go right for Baylor, Matt, for them to get into the national title game. Everybody pretty much knows that, but you certainly cannot rule out the Bears at this point. you got to keep in mind, this is a major conference. It's the Big 12. The last time you had an undefeated conference champion not play for the national title it was the 2004. It was the Auburn Tigers. And they get shut out. They just had too far to come. Well, we've seen teams outside the top ten in the first BCS make that jump there. Grant Rohatch, the backup quarterback to Richardson's in there. And here's Aaron Wimberlin. As they get it into Baylor territory at the 47-yard line. Grant Rohatch, the redshirt freshman from California, nearly spelled Richardson in week two against Iowa, but the coaches felt he wasn't ready. They obviously feel he's ready now to make an impact. Well, the coaches said also that that was an eye-opening experience for Rojas early in the season, that he wasn't ready and needed to redouble his efforts. He has, and they felt like he's made a great deal of progress, obviously entrusting him with an early series in this ballgame. First and 10 from the 48 of Baylor. Play clock inside of five. They got a hurry. Just got it off. Now they blow the whistle, and a timeout was actually called by Iowa State. Timeout. timeout. Iowa State. First charge timeout. Each team has two remaining here in the half. New quarterback in for the Cyclones, down 20 here in Waco. Twenty to nothing, Baylor. Iowa State has it in Baylor territory, but Grant Rohatch is in the game now. Let's go down to Don Davenport. Yeah, hey guys, coach is showing some frustration with this inexperienced offensive line, telling the guys they can't adjust if they don't communicate and that they're not talking at all. That has to change. Also, I'm sitting here looking at quarterback Richardson. He looks fine. It's the coach's decision here. The backup is in. Rohatch scrambling and makes his way out on the sideline, chased by Byron Bonds, the true freshman. It's going to be a gain of one. As you can see, Richardson now with the headset on. The starter is out. Well, you know, Paul Rhodes has shown he's not scared to make changes at quarterback. Still Jansen. Last year was his first start of the season versus Baylor when he went off. And, you know, it ended up finishing the season with Sam Richardson as his quarterback. And he's willing to go and change it up, see who's got a hotter hand. They didn't even give Rohatch a yard, so it's second and ten. Pass is complete to E.J. Bibbs, the first completion for Rohatch in his collegiate career. And it's going to bring up third down and six for Iowa State at the Baylor 43. And Phil Bennett, D coordinator for Baylor, shown he wants to heat up Sam Richardson. He brought pressure on previous third downs. Really only one passing conversion for Iowa State. And now with the young, inexperienced quarterback, he's going to play coverage. Rohatch on the run. Got away from the sack, but takes a big loss. Chris McAllister, the fifth-year senior defensive end, eighth on Baylor's all-time sacks list, doesn't get the sack, but he gets credit for the tackle and a loss of five. I'll tell you what, you don't have to blitz if you're going to get upfield pressure. And McAllister ended up closest to the quarterback when he threw it, but it was Terrence Lloyd from his defensive end position that flushed Rojach out of the pocket. Fourth punt for Spencer Roth. Or excuse me, Kirby Vanderkamp. And another good one for Vanderkamp. That's his second tonight inside the 20. 
And that one, a 48-yard boomer. That's what he does. He really flips the field for the Cyclones. Well, you look at the distance that that ball covers in the air, and then for it to just die on a turf field, that's amazing talent. You know, that's a guy, you know, that's like Phil Mickelson around the green. You know, just the touch. Puts a little anguish on that football. And this one isn't round, and it's spinning in a spiral. Somehow or other, for it to nose down and just die like that is an amazing talent. And he picks Petty again. Take a look at that punt and how it checks up. That is a talent. Look at that. It's like he's got it on a joystick or something and backs it up. C strong. And it's going to be a short pickup, second down and eight coming up. George on the tackle. Like you said, Baylor a little more deliberate tonight. 5.6 plays per scoring drive is what they've averaged on the season tonight. Over eight plays per scoring drive. Second and seven, play fake. Petty up the sideline. And Tevin Reese, well covered. Nigel Tribune, the corner. The only true freshman to play for the Cyclones the last two seasons. Good coverage. Third down. But that's what Wally Burnham's gonna try to do. He's gonna say, look, if you're gonna have a tight end in the game, then we're going to put seven men in the box and we're going to take our chances out wide. That time, we rolled the dice and won with an incompletion. Five of eight on third down tonight. Petty hoists it to the near sideline. Goodly the catch, good move after the catch, comes back to the center of the field and picks up the first down. Goodley and Reese, great weapons for this offense. 15 first downs now for Baylor. So we're coming up on six minutes to go before halftime. Glasgow Martin. Brought down by Luke Knott, but it's a five-yard pickup, second down and five. again pick up three more it's Luke not again on the tackle who played his way into the starting lineup this season redshirt freshman and had some good linebackers at Iowa State in recent years did get the first down and complete on first down Levi Noah with the catch and a big play back to midfield George finally tracks him down. Norwood, the number three receiver. They're looking for other guys to start supporting Goodley and Reese, and Norwood's one of the candidates. Yeah, there's so many of them, really. You know, Goodley and Reese are the ones that just happen to be getting their numbers called. Seastrup. First down and more. Down to the two. What an effort by Lake Seastrom. A 48-yard run finally tackled by Mitchell Myers. They do a great job of capturing the edge. You see, Iowa State basically forfeits it. Look at Lake Seastrom clean to the edge, and Goodley comes in. Number five there, just enough to get Seastrom all the way to the sideline. And Seastrom caps the drive. Touchdown. Second touchdown tonight for Lake Seastrup. Well, that was more typical of Baylor. Minute 52 on that drive. As Jones comes on for another extra point. And it's 27 to nothing, Bears. Let's go to the studio for an update with Matt. Thanks, Clay. Yeah, we had to wait until their offensive drive was over to squeeze in this quick update for you. We will take you around the Big 12 coming up at halftime, including we'll show you Baylor's former conference and state foe, Texas A&M, upset today in College Station. Wild day in the SEC as well. See you at halftime. Right, Hi, Matt. Thank you. 4.54 before half. There is Seastrunk. 
The second touchdown tonight. Those touchdown drives tonight. Three of them pretty quick. Again, the average this year coming into the night, 124. If you blink, you miss it. Well, a minute 52, and that's to cover basically the entire length of the football field. So Nick Seastrong, he didn't get that many carries, and so when he's running, I don't know, maybe he tightens up between carries. He'll make sure he stays good and loose for the next run. He's helping his average again tonight. When he touches the football, he's as electric as the Baylor passing game can be. Another return for Albert Gary, the senior from Florida. Penalty flags all over the field, and it's brought back to the 31-yard line. During the return of the kick, holding, receiving team, number 23, 10-yard penalty, first down. It's becoming that kind of night for Iowa State. That scoring drive for Baylor. 94 yards, and it's the third scoring drive of 90-plus this year for Art Briles' offense. Well, you could see why this team leads the country in plays of 30-plus yards. Those are big, explosive plays. They pick it up in chunks. Five tonight already. After the penalty, Iowa State starts at their own 18. Rohatch, the backup quarterback in there, and Wimberley is depleted. Sam Hall, the nickelback. He moved to nickel from safety this spring. He is still a safety mentality-wise. He is looking for those open field hits, and he nailed Wimberly there for a loss of five. And Sam Hall, they call him their barebacker. He was out there in the slot and diagnosed that play quickly enough to get upfield to make the tackle in the backfield. Rohatch, design quarterback keeper, and Baylor was ready for it. Let's go back one play. <laughs> Wimberley was put on a plate for Hall. Third and 15 for Iowa State. He converted twice on third down and six attempts. Rohatch gets away from Oakman. Won't pick up the first down as he's dumped at the 19 by Hall again. And the punting team We'll have to come out again for Iowa State. Number two. Well, penalty on Baylor. Yeah, they were saying, at first I thought just Sean Oakman, all six, nine of them just got a great jump and timed the snap perfectly. As it turns out, he got there just a little too early. He was in the neutral zone. But he was in the cyclone backfield almost immediately. No chance to protect versus that big body with that kind of a drop. So now third and eight after the penalty. Wimberley in the backfield behind Rohatch. Sam Richardson, the starter for Iowa State, has been benched. And now a timeout. Iowa State calling a timeout. With 2.51 to go before half, Paul Rhodes has one timeout remaining. Chase for the Sprint Cup stops at Talladega on Sunday. With only five races left, Matt Kenseth leads Jimmy Johnson by only four points and Kevin Harvick by 29, so it's nip and tuck. Check it out to see who's going to make a move in the standings this week. The NASCAR Sprint Cup Series at Talladega presented by Five Hour Energy Sunday at 1 on ESPN. Some key numbers tonight. As we're late here in the first half. 27 to nothing, Baylor. That's the rushing yards that have to be concerning Iowa State. They said they want to be able to establish the run and stop the run, something they did a year ago versus Baylor, something that beleaguered this Baylor team last week versus Kansas State, held to a season low, 109 rushing yards. And already the Bears eclipsing that 
and more than doubling it or close to doubling it in their passing attack. This is not what Iowa State was hoping to have so far in this game. Redshirt freshman Grant Rojas in a quarterback who's improved in practice over the last month beginning his first collegiate action here tonight in a hostile environment. They better hurry up. Got it off. Rojas off his back foot. Throws it downfield. Nobody home. Quinton Bundridge, the closest receiver, and he was five yards out of the play. And now it is fourth down. Well, Clay, in watching this ball game, coming into it, you know, we thought, look, what Iowa State has to do is you see Sam Richardson kind of counseling Rohan. They've got to take chances, find a way to maybe run a gadget play, get a turnover early. It's been Baylor that has run that script so far in the first half tonight, and the consequences are evidenced on the scoreboard. Kirby Vanderkamp. As Levi Norwood fields the punt, it's a 40-yard kick. Good field position for the Bears. Blake Seastrunk, the transfer from Oregon, leading the Big 12 with 129 yards rushing per game. And he's already got two touchdowns here tonight. 12 carries, 85 yards. Well, he doesn't meet, need many touches. He kind of burst onto the scene a season ago. The first seven ball games, he only had 26 yards a game. You see tonight, just the physical nature of him, too. 28 yards after contact. It doesn't take just one body to get Lake Seastrunk down on the ground. He'll carry this one. Bounces to the outside. Another positive run for Lake. 5'10", 210-pound junior from Temple, Texas. You know, we talk about quarterbacks at Baylor. What about the tailbacks? You know, Jay Finley, Terrence Ganaway, now Lake Seastrunk. They just churn out 1,000-yard backs. On second and three, he's got the first down. He'll back his way for a few more. To the 40-yard line of Iowa State. George again there for the tackle. It's a pickup of six for Seastrunk. Kind of an awkward finish to that run, wasn't it? <laughs> it was. It's like he didn't know if he wanted to spin or go for style points. He went Herschel Walker there. And he's going to make his way to the sideline. Oregon is called the high-powered offense of the Northwest. Now, Baylor getting that reputation here in the Southwest. That's the school Lake Seastrup transferred from. Tevin Reese about a yard away from making another big play for Baylor as Petty overshot him. Pretty good coverage in the secondary by Washington. And I think Baylor is starting to catch up to Oregon in uniform combinations. <laughs> yeah, you know, they're, they're bumped up to being a, a quote-unquote yeah. tier one Nike school. These are going to start to pump uniform in front. There's Martin. Brought down by the strong safety, Dion Broomfield. It's a gain of four. Don't let tonight's unis fool you. They've got enough different combinations thanks to Nike. They could change uniforms for the next five seasons. That's a lot of different combinations. Kind of disappointed we didn't get to see the chrome helmets today. <laughs> Petty up the sideline. Man wide open. It's Clay Fuller. But again, Petty can't connect. Well, we touched on it. The perfection that Art Bryles wants, that he thinks he can achieve with Bryce Petty. And he just throws like that. You know, he could have had him, and he overthrew him. It's also the confidence he has in his quarterback. Go ahead and go for it. Baylor 5 of 8 on fourth down this year. Going to keep that offense out on the field. And they run so quickly, but this time, Iowa State showing pressure, giving Petty an opportunity to check out of the play. Here comes that pressure. Get rid of it, caught by Goodwin. Walks in untouched. Touchdown, Bears. A fourth down touchdown reception for Goodley. A 36-yard play. Well, Clay, we talked about how fast this offense moves. You talk to Kendall Bryles, who's played quarterback for his father. Jones to attempt the PAT. You know, he's quoted as saying they don't want these quarterbacks having to think a lot out there on the field. They make a lot of decisions as to where to go with the football. Not as much reading as you might see, but there when they're afforded a chance, 
to adjust the play. They get into just the right call and end up in the end zone yet again. That's their second touchdown drive under a minute, and their fourth under three minutes. You can see Patty. He's just looking downfield. He's checking safety rotation, then he knows exactly where he's going with the football. He's brought Clay Fuller over in motion. From one side of the formation to the other, there was confusion in the coverage to the Baylor sideline, and Art Bryles, well, the wizard, he's kind of the outlaw here in Texas. He doesn't care what people think, doesn't care what tradition or orthodox or conventional thought means. You know, defensive coordinator Phil Bennett says he's constantly being challenged by this offensive mind of Art Bryles. And incidentally, Montgomery, Phil Montgomery, his offensive coordinator, who calls the plays with input from the head coach here at Baylor. Second touchdown for Goodley tonight. He's over 100 yards receiving. Another short kick from Jones. Gary gets across the 25 as flags come up. During the return, the illegal ball from the back. Receiving team, number 23, 10-yard penalty, first down. Baylor punted on its first drive. They have scored on six straight drives. Again, who does this remind you of? A little bit of Oregon? <laughs> A little bit. Yeah, I'll tell you <laughs> what. And the way Art Bryle sees it is that uh, Oregon reminds him of them. You know, he thinks. That's right. Well, as a quote he said, uh, Oregon says that, uh, that Baylor is the, is the Oregon of the Southwest. He says, well, they're the Baylor of the Northwest. That's right. And I'm not borrowing anything. I asked him yesterday, who are you inspired by? And he says, well, you know, I don't know, my high school coach, W.T. Stapler, a great high school name. Devondrick Neely. For Iowa State, as Paul Rhodes is using some of the uh, younger players on his depth chart, Devondrick Neely, the number five back, gets the handoff from Grant Rohach, the backup quarterback, who has spelled Sam Richardson. And now here's Tad Ekby with the catch to bring up third down and short for the Cyclones. Sam Richardson set down on the bench by Paul Rhodes. They're not going to get it. Neely brought down, no gain, fourth down. It was Byron Bonds, another tackle for the true freshman. Byron Bonds has really asserted himself in this ball game. Did a great job on the backside of that run, getting penetration, chasing him down to get a tackle in the backfield. Baylor wants a timeout. As it appeared, Iowa State was ready to go for it on fourth down. And why not? They're down 34 to nothing here with 34 seconds to go in the half. Dr. Pepper, quest for the coach's trophy. And Waco, Texas, in case you didn't know, is the home of Dr. Pepper. It was created right here. Art Bryles has Baylor poised to win the Big 12 for the first time. And a win tonight, and they're bowl eligible for the fourth straight year. He can't say enough about what he's done. I was wondering why Dr. Pepper tasted so much better this weekend. It's right there close to the plant. You've had three already today. Well, that could be why. It's, uh, it's closer to the source, man. It's pure syrup. Mark <laughs> Bryles, you know, he's the magic man down here and what he's been able to do and turn around in such short order here at Baylor. They decide to punt. Vanderkamp comes out for the sixth time. And Fair caught at the 32. 43-yard kick. 34 to nothing, Baylor. Which will be at Kansas next week. Right here on ESPNU. You and I will be in Lawrence to see this offense in action in the state of Kansas. Then this team will have three straight games against ranked opponents. We talked about 
all the success that Baylor has had, but Art Bryles is much more tempered when it comes to talking about his football team. He is taking nothing for granted coming down the line. Well, that's smart. A lot can happen, and the meat of their conference schedule still lays ahead of him. Here's Antoine Goodley continuing to tack on to his numbers. Give him eight more after that catch. Sam E. Richardson knocks him out of bounds, not to be confused with Sam B., the quarterback. Petty pumps, rolls out, throws on the run, hits Goodley again. They're going to have to put seven guys on him to keep him from catching passes. Down to the 43-yard line of Iowa State, 14 seconds to go before halftime. They start the clock up. Baylor wants to score again. Caught Goodley, and he's out of bounds with four seconds to go. And we'll see if they bring the field goal unit up. Jones has already hit tonight from 22 and 21, and he's got a strong leg. In his career, a high of 58. That happened last year at Oklahoma. Iowa State calls its last time out. Again, four seconds to go before the break. Well, Baylor, they don't know how to let up off the gas. That's not what they do. They just stand on it. You get the ball with less than 30 seconds, and you're moving so quickly that even on that series, you know, here in, in the Big 12, the officiating crew, you mentioned there's an eighth official. The chains aren't even set up, and they're snapping the football on the next first down. And this, that quick of an offensive pace, and it gets them into scoring position yet again. We'll see the game of Kansas next week here on the U, then three straight against ranked opponents. Oklahoma, Texas Tech, at Oklahoma State, and TCU in Texas as well. This will be a 51-yard attempt for Aaron Jones, his career long again of 58, so this is certainly within his range. This to make it 37 to nothing before half. As long this year, 36. Out of the hold of Brody Trahan, kick on the way, looks good. You bet. A 37-point first half for the Bears and their defense pitching a shutout. That field goal is exactly the momentum that Baylor needed going into halftime. I mean, it's just, you look at them somewhat facetiously. It's just one of those things where this offense started up a little bit slower today, but they finally got up on plane. Here's Don with Coach Bryles. Coach, you told us you wanted to see your offense improve. How would you assess their performance in that first half? You know, I think we started slowly. Uh, the defense has really played well early. You know, we got a, got a turnover down there deep and went in and scored, and now we're in a little bit of a rhythm. So I think right now we're playing pretty well. You know, we had to come out and play second half just like we did the first. You mentioned your defense pitching a shutout right now. What has to happen for them to keep that going? Let's just keep playing a lot of passing and energy. Crowd's really helping us. Appreciate it, Coach. Thank you. 37 to nothing Baylor leading on homecoming night at the half. Now we go to the studio. Matt, Jason, and Charles, ESPNU's college halftime report. Thank you, Clay. Something is terribly wrong with Baylor's offense. Three field goals in that they first Start Started out slow. You heard him. My goodness. Three uh, field goals they had to sell. Whoever has to edit the highlight package at the end of the season for Baylor's got a tough job. 37 to nothing at the half. First half stats presented by John Deere. And this offense is on pace for over 900 yards of offense tonight. They average 715 per game. Another big night, Matt Stinchcomb. And I know Art Bryles is still looking for perfection in this offense, but it's hard to poke a lot of holes in this offense. Well, you know, if you want to look for perfection and we're going to start splitting hairs and parsing it closely, you know, Bryce Petty had a couple overthrows. You know, he fumbled a snap that led to a field goal. I mean, it's hard to poke holes in it. 37 points. Your defense is playing great. They generated a turnover to get you the football to back up a scoring off a gadget play. You know, other than that first offensive possession, You've seen a Baylor offense 
operate very, very effectively, and they got the ground game going eventually after having difficulty with the conventionally designed called runs on the ground. Lake Seastrunk finally getting going in their rushing attack. Iowa State will have the football to start the second half. Aaron Jones, the kickoff. Albert Gary's going to bring it out of the end zone. The Iowa State return man is going to be stopped short of the 15, driven down at the 13 as we go down to Don Davenport. Well, Clay, you want to stop Baylor's offense? According to Paul Rhodes, you got to play better offense yourself. He said they've got to hold on to the ball a little bit more. He said if they can score, maybe they can disrupt Baylor's rhythm just a little bit. And he said they are going to go with Sam Richardson here in the second half to see what he can do. But he said in order to disrupt Baylor, they have to hold on to the ball a little bit longer. We'll see, we'll see if they can do that here in the second half 14 minutes 44 seconds of time of possession in that first half for Iowa State meanwhile Baylor 15 16 even though they were striking quickly now well and last week was the third quarter when Kansas State started to make waves as Richardson bounces it to the outside picks up about three well, part of that you know last week that third quarter lull that Baylor went through and they had difficulty getting points on the board, and they themselves, only eight offensive plays, turnovers, and a blocked punt might take something like that for Iowa State to try to climb back into this ball game here in the second half. Richardson hands it off to Aaron Wimberly. He'll get about three more third down. Richardson was five of eight for 41 yards passing in that first half. And then he was taken out of the game for Grant Rohach. And now Richardson starting the second half. And once again, you know, they avoid the, the third and manageable, third and short situation, having difficulty even with those in an obvious passing down. Was two of eight on third down in the first half. Richardson sets the throw, gets chased by Terrence Lloyd, the defensive end, and Richardson gets the first down despite all of those injuries he's been dealing with, including a sore groin. First half. They'll move the chains. Once again, though, Iowa State having difficulty providing their quarterback enough time to set his feet on a seven step drop and look downfield to deliver the football, regardless the mobility of Richardson paying off with the first down. Wanting to throw on first down. Richardson, this time he is going to be sacked. The third sack for Baylor tonight as Richardson is crumpled for a loss of five. Well, that time, it's more like a coverage sack, but see the pressure coming from the edge. Nice pickup initially, but nowhere to go with the football, and Richardson just flushes right up into the arms of McAllister. And McAllister fighting off a couple of blocks to make that sack. He's the defensive MVP of last year's Holiday Bowl for Baylor. Pressure coming again. Second and 15. Richardson complete to Jarvis West. Boy, West has been quiet in this one after having a three-touchdown game against Baylor last year. In the first half, Baylor started sky kicking on their kickoffs, kicking away from Jarvis West. Showing the respect that they have for his return ability. They had one nice return in the first half. He needs to figure more prominently in their offensive game plan. Richardson ran for the first down on third down last time. He throws this time, and it's incomplete. Intended for West and nearly picked off by Dixon, who had that big interception last week in Manhattan. Well, that time, Phil Bennett heated them up. They brought seven. See the ball hit right through Dixon's hands. Could go in the other direction. You know, Dixon played very well versus West Virginia a couple of weeks ago. Didn't have a great game last week, but did have that pick to help clinch and seal the deal. Kirby Vanderkamp on for the seventh time tonight. Big punt. Levi Norwood backing off. Fair caught at the 16-yard line. And that's what Vanderkamp does. He had 11 punts last week in the game against Texas Tech, but only two return yards. That one for 53. And Bryles on Bryce Petty says, I like competitors who are fearless, bright, and mature. 
What impresses me about Bryce is that he waited his turn, and he's done it the right way. Yeah. And he had to wait. My RG3 and Nick Florence. And he's improved mentally and physically. That's been critical in his development. Well, you can see when we asked him yesterday, is this offense abbreviated as a first-year star? He said, no, this guy's got enough experience to run the offense that we want on the field. Seastrunk, who's up over 100 yards, picks up four, second down and six. Petty actually committed in high school to Tennessee, but then after Philip Fulmer got fired, decided to come to Baylor. On the jet sweep. First down for Robbie Rhodes, the Under Armour All-American out of Southwest High School in Fort Worth. Give him eight, and he'll move the sticks again. And go back to Petty. Keep in mind, we're not for a few snaps, really. A couple plays in games in 2011 for Nick Florence. Nick Florence is the quarterback probably for Baylor this season. Right. Seastrunk. One of the rare times he's been out of options and bottled up. It's a pickup of one as Brandon Jensen and Corey Morrissey are there. Already tonight, this Iowa State defense, we've seen a ton of plays. So as you mentioned, Baylor on, on record pace, 54 snaps in the first half. Got to be tiring already. Man wide open, Goodley. Another big play for Antoine Goodley. As he is down. Sam Richardson. And that's another Baylor. Petty found him wide open along that sideline to the 36-yard line. Yeah, it's just busted coverage. You know, they line up stacked. They go right back to him. After the 43-yard play, he's going to get eight or nine more. Well, part of it with fatigue, it's not just physical errors. You become mentally fatigued. And, and the fact that this offense is so explosive and runs so many snaps, it's a challenge, you know, for Wally Burnham's charges out there on defense to be lined up properly, much less to execute once the ball snapped. Second and one, Seastrom picks it up. Blake Seastrom. A four-yard gain. He's got 17 carries for 109 yards now and two touchdowns. And keep in mind, Iowa State faced 101 plays last week against Texas Tech. So this is two weeks in a row for this team. And they've already played two games worth of snaps. And there's a half to pull. Glasgow Martin brought down by Washington. Short pickup. Not three yards. Second down and seven. As Baylor's offense is marching again. Down to the 20-yard line of Iowa State. Petty. Complete to Tevin Reese. He dives inside the 10. First down, goal to go for the Bears. You see, obviously, Baylor can get behind you, run pass coverage, but they can also run physically after the catch. Puts a premium on open field tackling. Glasgow Martin down to the six. Second down and goal to go. You get down in the red zone, you know, Baylor is more willing to slow down at that point. It's a condensed football field. There's a meaningful snaps. All of them are, of course. You see our browse, he's wanting them to move even quicker, taking his headset off to scream at his charge and run a snap. Nothing less than perfection as Petty keeps and goes in. Well, that was a pretty nice fake. Almost perfect, I would say, as Petty saunters in from six yards out to make it 43 to nothing. PAT coming up. Well, we've hit on Bryce Petty. And you know what? One element that we haven't seen a lot from him this season and, and likely won't. He's a different quarterback. And Baylor's happy to shape their offense around their talents at the quarterback position. He hasn't run it a lot, but he scored there. Fifth PAT tonight for Aaron Jones. That's 154 straight. It's 44 nothing. Well, Bryce Petty. Dialed in as a passer, hitting his favorite targets, and Goodley out wide. This Reese involved as well as top two targets, but to get in on the action, he pulls the ball, calls his own number, gets in for touch. Visit WatchESPN.com or download the Watch ESPN app to watch ESPN live anytime, anywhere. Brought to you by Vizio. 
Beautiful moon over Waco, Texas tonight on homecoming night for the Bears. All Baylor, 44 to nothing with 9.16 to go in the third quarter. The Bears have had nine drives tonight on offense. The first one resulted in a punt, eight straight scoring drives since. Big 12 standings, current look. Texas Tech 4-0 in the league, Texas 3-0. You see Baylor at 2-0, poised to go to 3-0. and And their goal is to win this conference for the first time in program history. They have never won the Big 12. Well, and they play a round-robin schedule here in this conference. They're going to see everybody. And a lot of those teams, they've, they've yet to play. You know, they've got to play Texas Tech. That'll be a neutral site. They've yet to play Oklahoma. They'll have to play Oklahoma State, TCU. There's a lot of meat left on the bone for these Baylor Bears. Iowa State will have it at the 25-yard line. As Aaron Wimberly takes a knee in the end zone. And Jarvis West has not been a factor in the return game. And the Pierce are going to stick with Sam Richardson at quarterback. He did not play the lion's share of that first half after Grant Rojas was brought in by Paul Rhodes. Here you see the quarterback on the other side of the field. Bryce Petty. 21 of 28 for 326 yards passing and two touchdowns. He's also scored a touchdown on the ground. Richardson keeps. He'll get three. Richardson, the nephew of Dot Richardson, who won a gold medal with the 1996 U.S. Olympic softball team. Good athlete out of Winter Park, Florida, but it's been a difficult season for him and for this Iowa State offense. The injuries have really been troubling for Iowa State. Yeah, and they knew that they were going to be an inexperienced team coming into the season. Not returning a lot of stars, only nine, five on one side of the ball, four on the other. But the injuries depleted them even further. Should have been caught by Bundridge. Their big play receiver had the opportunity maybe to take that all the way to the end zone. He had his man beat, went right through his fingers. And those are the plays that have to be made. You know, Sam Richardson, when he puts it on you, you're the top receiver, the go-to guy. You have to come up with the catch. And now it looks like what's been a depleted unit all season long for Iowa State might be even more so. It's Jamison Locke, the left guard, who missed the last three games with a knee injury. You see he's got braces on both of his knees. And he's going to go limping off the field. Man, it's just hyperextended or something. You know, so that's a big body to allow to walk off in his own power if he's got a serious injury to his knee. But as we pointed out, you know, this Iowa State offensive line, I mean, they need name tags on their helmets so that everybody knows who's in there. You don't want to call the wrong guy by the wrong name. It's just new faces every week in that offensive huddle. And there's no way to build an offense that way, especially when you've got a lot of young, inexperienced guys to begin with. Sixth game in a row tonight for Iowa State where they've had a different starting five up front. Third and seven, Richardson now pressured. Dumps it off to E.J. Bibbs, the tight end. He's got the first down. Sam Hall finally topples him out at the 44-yard line, a gain of 15. Some life here for this Iowa State offense. You see him jumping on the football. They want to run a little bit of pace as well. It's just the sixth first down tonight for the Clones. Chantrell Johnson. Good run on first down. The senior picking up five. Oregon State, California coming up tonight. 10.30 Eastern on ESPN2. Of course, UCLA, one of the undefeated teams coming into the weekend, knocked off today by Stanford in the Pac-12. Play fake. Richardson. Comes to the near sideline, had a man, Coleman. And again, they can't connect. And you can see that Sam Richardson is frustrated out there. Yeah, you know, a couple of good passes, but on that one, that's a difficult throw to make, and Richardson, he overthrew Coleman just enough to where he could not come down with the catch. Average yards to go on third down, over five. That's tough. 
especially on the road. Richardson sacked for the fourth time tonight. Eddie Lackey, the junior college transfer, brings him down. A loss of 12, fourth down, Iowa State. Well, we've seen it. There's Phil Bennett willing to be aggressive. He can certainly afford to be. Well, Iowa State had opportunities downfield. Bundridge with the drop. But otherwise, it's been a passing game that has been contained, not very threatening. Baylor more than capable of trying to come after the passer. Fair caught at the 23. You know, it hasn't been just the offense tonight for Baylor. The defense has really stepped up for the Bears. Richardson dumped and got four sacks of Iowa State quarterbacks this season. That's my kind of night. Seven oh six to go here in the third quarter. Already forty-four to nothing, Baylor. This is what the Bears do as they attempt to score on their ninth straight drive. Bryce Petty, the quarterback, the nation's most efficient passer, coming into the game. He's been efficient again tonight, man. And you can see it. You know they talk about this offense forces you to cover and defend the width of the field. Throws to the middle. He's only completed two passes. Only attempted three. Everything else has been to the edge and obviously predominantly to the right, but balanced enough to make you respect the left side of their offensive formation. But Baylor's going to make you defend sideline to sideline. There's Petty, intended for Corey Coleman, who he did not see in the first half. He was suspended for the first half for targeting last week against Kansas State. And that was nearly picked off for Petty. Again, just one interception this season. That should have been plucked. Deion Broomfield couldn't come up with it. Yeah, that time, you know, we just touched on it. With Petty clearly more focused on the perimeter passing game. But he didn't see Deion Broomfield underneath that route. Broomfield was just running underneath it. He should have come up with the interception there. And once again, you know, we hit it at halftime coming out. And Petty, he's having a pretty good night. But if you're on Bryles, that's something he's going to bring up in the film session, something he expects his quarterback to do better and see. After the chop block penalty, a 15-yard walk-off. First and 21 for Baylor now. And it's Seastrunk. With the carry. Gain of four. So second and 18 for Baylor. This team averages over 63 points per game. Let's see if they hit that tonight. Petty gets rid of it. To Jordan Niver, his first catch tonight. The all Big 12 tight end the last couple of years. After a transfer from Stanford, he has been a big part of the offense for the Bears. He's been quiet tonight. It's a two-yard reception, third down and long. You know, Jordan, he's a guy that provides Baylor a lot of flexibility. They'll line up in an unbalanced line. He'll be up in the tackle position. They'll line him up as a fullback. They afford this Baylor offense a lot of flexibility without having to substitute. Doesn't allow a defense to change their personnel. They can flop their formation because of the versatility at tight end. Petty. Complete, but Fuller is short of the first down. A gain of 15. We'll see if Art Bryles decides to go for it and he'll save Spencer Roth, the punter, some work. You know, coming into Kansas State last week, Baylor had only punted seven times. They punted it away six times last week versus K State in that ball game. They've only punted it once here tonight. You can see the fans, the players. <laughs> The crowd is booing. Fourth and short, and they want their offense to, you know what? These fans are spoiled, man. They, they want to see some more yards. They want the show to continue. Low snap, Roth handles it. And Jarvis West, all he can do is call for the fair catch, so Iowa State will have it inside the 25 with 5.01 to go in the third. It's like Halloween has come early for these Iowa State fans. It's been scary from the opening kickoff for the Cyclones. It's 44 to nothing, and Art Bryles' offense hasn't had many three and outs 
this season. Only eight all year. They just suffered their first here tonight. Well, that's something that pace offenses, and you talk to these offensive coaches, they pride themselves on. Doesn't do you any good to run a bunch of plays quickly and then get back to the sideline unless it's to send your extra point unit on. They don't want to punt. Three and out can kill offenses like this and certainly run down a defense. Sam Richardson floats it into the secondary. It's intercepted. Sam Hall. The nickelback. Sam Hall. An 18-yard interception return. And not like this offense needs any more help, but this defense is playing real well tonight. That's two takeaways that this defense for Baylor has generated. And he either overthrew Ernst Brunn or he was behind Albert Gary. Either way, Richardson's off target. You see it there. There's two opportunities, receivers in the area. But the only guy that comes down with it is wearing green, a traditional green at that for the Baylor Bears and Sam Hall. Keep it on the ground. Glasgow Martin takes it inside the 10, a gain of two. And that makes it now 10 games in the last 13 that Baylor has had two or more forced turnovers. Well, that's something that Phil Bennett, when he came on here, he realized the style of play at Baylor. And in this conference, you have to focus on his takeaways. You don't worry about total defense. Obviously, you have to worry Let's about scoring ball, defense. Gary. But it's red zone, Brandon it's takeaways, and it's third downs. And those are three areas yeah. that Baylor has really improved to complement what has become an offensive juggernaut in many ways. After the Martin one-yard run, third down at seven for Baylor. They can pick up a first down inside the one. They keep it on the ground. Martin runs into Jeremiah George short of the first down marker. And we'll see what Art Bryles decides to do here on fourth down. The crowd wants him to go for it. Well, it looks like that they are. You, you got to know that you got a gunslinger for a coach, a quarterback that's fearless. They don't want to settle for field goals. Martin, I think he stopped short of the first down. Sure appeared that way, and the line judge comes in. And it is going to be short as Jeremiah George is going to be credited with the stop. They're likely going to bring out the chains for a measurement. Nope, they won't even measure. Yes, yeah. Iowa State. Under defensive coordinator Wally Burnham, the 72-year-old coach, takes over on downs. Well, you know what? I'm going to credit that the victory to this Iowa State. Look at Paul Rhodes. They're out there slapping helmets with Jeremiah George. They're down 44 points. They haven't put anything on the scoreboard. But you know what? That is a victory. They'll be able to hold a team out of the end zone. Most reminiscent of a couple of weeks ago when Iowa State Many people thought it had a goal line stand versus Texas. Grant Rohach comes back on. Ooh, Jeff Woody barely got out of the end zone. The short yardage guy almost got stopped in the end zone for a safety. Yeah, you know, that looked to me like Baylor Run down blitz, no reason to stay off the line of scrimmage. Eddie Lackey was able to pierce the offensive front. Woody barely hits the ball over the goal line. Now Rojas rolling out, throws, and it's caught. It's Quinton Bundridge. Dimitri Goodson, the former. Gonzaga basketball player makes the stop after a game of eight. Well, here's the previous play. You see Woody get the handoff, but he's met right at the goal line by Eddie Lackey. And you see he clearly gets the ball out of the end zone. But this Baylor defense demonstrating how aggressive they really are. And when you're in the shadows of your own goalpost, you can afford to be even more aggressive. Third down has been miserable tonight for Iowa State. 4 of 12. Rohatch keeps. Oh, he's punished. What a punishing stick by Ahmad Dixon. 
You can hear it all the way up here in the second level in the press box. Good night. Tell you what, Rojas, there's a greeting. Ahmad Dixon, I touched on it before. He looked excellent in run support when I watched that West Virginia film. He was all over the football field. And their safeties at Baylor, they're not far from the line of scrimmage. There's plenty of opportunity for them to run downhill and make tackles versus the run. This is returnable for Norwood. Levi Norwood. Cuts back to the 30. On his way to the end zone. Touchdown, Levi Norwood. A 52-yard punt return for the junior out of State College. Just when Iowa State has something to build on, you set a cornerstone and say, look, we got a quarter to play. We got a goal line stand. Paul Rhodes is slapping helmets for Jeremiah George. Then the offense can barely get out of the end zone. You get a special teams return and just the momentum, whenever there's just a little bit swinging in your favor, it goes right back to the Bears. They score in so many ways. We have not seen a return before now. Levi Norwood changes that from 52 yards away, and it's 51 we're up. Lake Seastruck dancing on the sideline. Smiles at homecoming night here in Waco. It's 51 to nothing. And celebrating its ninth year sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal, that's Allstate making contributions to participating universities' general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kick. To date, Allstate has contributed more than $3 million in scholarship money. Those Nets are probably uh, getting tattered and worn out here in Waco, Texas, for as much as they've been raised this season. Wimberley on the return for Iowa State, and it's a good one. Out across the 30 to the 40 to the 45 in midfield. Makes a man miss to the 25 and track down from behind near the 20. Aaron Wimberly from Snellville, Georgia, outside of Atlanta. The junior college transfer with an explosive play for Iowa State. And there have been too few of these for the Cyclones today. Oh, they've been he's been bottled up in the offensive set. Jarvis West, nice block leading him up into the hole, and Wimberly. Well, good vision enough to cut it back into the field of play and give yourself a chance to pick up more yards. And how do you answer a special team's letdown? Well, you come back with a nice kickoff for turning your own and give your offense maybe its finest opportunity at the end zone all game long. Nice starting field position for Iowa State. Obviously, at the 18-yard line, Devondrick Neely gets the carry. As we're under a minute to go here in the third quarter. Remember last year, Iowa State beat Baylor by two touchdowns in Ames. That must seem like a million years ago for Coach Paul Rhodes. A totally different deal. You, know, you look at it, each year is a new season. Rosters always turn over. Obviously, there's turnover for Iowa State at the quarterback position. But Baylor, defensively, is a different squad than they were a year ago. Second and seven from the Baylor 15, Rojas. Time to throw, and does, throws it short. Incomplete intended for P.J. Harris, the redshirt freshman out of Groveland, Florida. So now third and seven. Well, Iowa State trying to seize on the momentum created by that return. They stay in the same formation with heavy play action. Baylor just disciplined in their coverage. Listen to this crowd. You would swear it was a one-score game. It's 51 to nothing, and they want to stop here. And they want their offense back on the football field. Rojas knew he was going to get sacked, had to get rid of him. Bryce Hager was breathing down his neck. 
And Paul Rhodes is all fired up. Well, what Paul Rhodes is saying is, well, my receiver gets railroaded all the way out into the uh, to the boundary and off the football field. Well, that man's going to fight for his football team no matter what. Grant Rohatch in his first collegiate game at Iowa State. Play clock in set of five. Fourth down, they're going for it to the end zone. Incomplete. Baylor holds and they'll take over. For Iowa State, obviously deflating to come away with nothing. They have a fine field position and a return. You see Paul Rhodes still working the officials. But the Baylor defense and the fight that they continue to demonstrate, I think that's the biggest difference between 2012 and 2013, and that's what makes Baylor a contender. Magic here with your Dr. Pepper 10 conference update in the ACC. Florida State off to a fast start. Taj Boyd fumbles. Mario Edwards Jr. scoop and score. 37 yards that made it 17 0 and 17 7. Florida State in the second play. All right, a great game there in the ACC. A couple of undefeated teams. Meanwhile, an undefeated team here in Baylor as we take a look at our Taco Bell game track. And it's 51 to nothing as we start the fourth quarter. The offense always is going to be the story for Baylor. But we can't overlook this defense entirely. They've allowed just 114 total yards for Iowa State, just 33 on the ground. Yeah, that's a nice bounce back game, if you want to call it that, for this Baylor defense. You know, last week, they allowed Kansas State 327 rushing yards. First down. Daniel Sams at the quarterback position, almost 200 yards by himself this is a different unit and they need it to be it's a Last different team ball now ball obviously here. versus Iowa State Given one that we've already talked about has been banged up but it's a different defensive unit that's playing yeah. a lot better this season two yard pickup for Glasgow Martin second down and eight and his defense under Phil Bennett third year defensive coordinator for Baylor came into the game allowing just 18 points per contest ranked 18th in the NCAA Hard run on second and eight for Martin. We have third down and short for the Bears. Then it talks about his three favorite statistics takeaways, third down defense, and red zone defense. And we saw that red zone D bow its neck on that last series, forcing the turnover on downs as Martin picks it up. Gain of five. I'll move the chains. You know, they recognize. There's two aspects to this game. You, know, you can score a lot of points, but you got to get the ball back to your offense. Bryce Petty, they're not done yet. Corey Coleman, the intended receiver, is out of bounds. It's incomplete, but they continue to take big shots, even though they're up 51 to nothing. You know, just when you think they're going to go to the ground game, they're still going to open things up. That time just a little bit wide with the pass. There's not a lot of room afforded the quarterbacks. And these receivers, when we say they're wide receivers, they're very wide receivers. Flag on the play. Offense, number one. Five-yard penalty. penalty, second down. Corey Coleman, the receiver, is off ahead of the play. Art Bryles and Phil Bennett. Also very good friends. They played against each other, coached against each other. As Seth Russell, the backup quarterback to Bryce Petty, is brought in. He'll hand off to Shock Linwood. Redshirt freshman running back. Picks up a couple. Seth Russell, dual threat backup, has played in every game except last week at Kansas State. And you know, if you're a backup quarterback, you want to be on a team like this, you're going to get a lot of chances to play because the team's always going to have big leads. Well, you know, it's not just the defense that's barely played in the second half. Bryce Petty, a lot of these offensive starters, they come out of the lineup. You know, maybe get some snaps in the third quarter. They're not playing in the fourth quarter. 
Intercept. No. Should have been. Seth Russell threw it right to Nick Crow in the defensive end. Who recovered a couple of fumbles earlier this season against Tulsa. Thought he had his first pick of the season, but he comes up empty. Gonna catch those when he hits it right between the... Oh! I mean, he's going to secure the football, and he knocks it out of his own arm. You know, Paul Rhodes is over there saying, look, man, we're going to run a zone pressure, and I'm going to drop you back in coverage. You're in the right spot. Come up with that pick. He's probably thinking, you know what? I'm going to take this thing to the house. I'm going to go ahead and secure this football. Either way, nice play, and you get the punt. Jarvis West, again, let's stay away from him. Spencer Roth with a good punt. It's been that kind of year for Iowa State. Certainly been that kind of night. Should have been a pick. Lands on the ground. ESPNU College Football Primetime is presented by New Raspberry 5-Hour Energy. Available for a limited time. Get yours now. And in part by the City Thank You Card. Earn two times the thank you points on dining out and entertainment. Robert Griffin III put Baylor football back on the map in 2011. Nearly 5,000 yards total offense and 47 touchdowns. And took home the Heisman Trophy. Some thought after he left the program would come back to earth. But Nick Florence actually passed for more yards than RG3 the next year. And now Bryce Petty is on a record pace. Looks like his night is done. After throwing for 343 yards and a couple of touchdowns. Also ran for one touchdown in this game. Grant Rohatch, the Iowa State backup, throws an interception. Third turnover tonight for Iowa State as Joe Williams picks it off. Joe Williams, he just runs right underneath this route. He's looking in the backfield. Rohatch knows he's going to him. Receiver's already out of bounds. Joe Williams is the only receiver they could have made this completion. Nice concentration, good hands. Gets that foot down in bounds. And this Baylor fan base, they get their offense right back out on the football field. They can't get enough of it. And the defense, once again, third takeaway tonight. They do an excellent job of it all season long. They're on a tear when it comes to turnovers. It's the fourth drive tonight that has started. But Iowa State territory. Now Seth Russell showing his nimble feet. Great fake. And he runs it in for 40 out. The backup to Bryce Petty. Scoring a rushing touchdown. That's a one-play drive in eight seconds, by the way. <laughs> but Baylor, that's, that's an eternity. They hate full seconds. Aaron Jones attacks on the extra point, and it's 58 to nothing in Waco. Well, we talk about Bryce Petty. He's been pretty good tonight. He's got a rushing touchdown. Seth Russell, his backup, wants to show him the taillights and end up in the end zone. Big week for BCS Countdown presented by Vizio this week. It'll be the first BCS standings of the season released on Sunday. A ton to talk about, especially with all the upsets this week. 8.30 on ESPN, 9 on ESPNU Sunday, BCS Countdown. 7, 8, 9, losing this week. Texas A&M, Louisville, and UCLA all go down. I'll tell you what, the way it looks right now, there's a chance that half of the top 10 goes down today. If LSU loses to Ole Miss, obviously Clemson or FSU has to lose. The shakeup, the upsets, and we've been talking about all season. Where are they? Well, they all, they all kind of showed up here today. Kyle Peterson, the backup kicker to Aaron Jones, keeps it on the ground. And it's going to be marked... at the 20 yard line. So. And 
a kind of night for Paul Rhodes and the Iowa State Cyclones. He's had his team in bowl games three of the last four years, but it is going to be extremely hard now for Iowa State the rest of the way after a loss tonight. They host Oklahoma State, and then they're at Kansas State the next two weeks. Devondrick Neely for the 25. Sean Oakman on the tackle. And Coach Rhodes knew it's going to be an uphill battle this season. We look at his schedule. He knew he had to come out hot. They didn't. They came out slow. They drop a game to Northern Iowa, lose to Iowa. They dropped some close games. They've been in ball games. They've been competitive up until this one tonight. Rojas hit, falls out. Recovered by Iowa State. Jamal Palmer. The defensive end hammered Rohatch, ball popped out, and Oni Amoyla, the sophomore out of Coppell, Texas, recovers, but it's a loss of nine for the Clones. Once again, too, this offensive front so challenged. True freshman Andrew Billings for Baylor inside. They're having their way for most of the night anyway with a beleaguered Iowa State offensive front. Four conversions on third down tonight. They won't convert here. Devondrick Neely dumped at the 22, a gain of six. As Trahan makes the tackle. Just 117 yards of total offense tonight for Iowa State. This is the 10th punt for Kirby Vanderkamp. He had 11 last week in the game against Texas Tech. His leg's going to fall off. As this one rolls to the 21. 57 yard kick. Well, this Baylor defense, as much fireworks as you can expect from the offense, this has been a suffocating unit. They've generated takeaways. They've played at the second level. They've done an excellent job of making plays on the ball in the air. They've come up and made some big sticks. And this is a team that has really grown on that side of the football. I mean, they were they were pretty downtrodden last season. It was a nasty stretch. And they've asserted themselves well through six ball games. Here's Phil Bennett, who was actually the defensive coordinator at Iowa State back in the mid-80s. Former SMU head coach. He and Art Bryles have been friends for years, even born on the same day, December 3rd, 1955. After the five-yard penalty against Baylor. First down complete to Corey Coleman. And he's upended at the 23. Eight-yard pickup. But you said it before, the biggest change for Baylor, certainly they were putting up points last year and the year before that. How the defense has been shored up is going to go a long way for this team really contending for a national title. You look at them at the same point in the season a year ago, and they're a 3-3 three and three squad after six ball games, last in the FBS in total defense. Obviously a challenge to measure your defense by that here in this conference. They were lousy on third downs. They were giving up huge amounts of points, 70 points, 49 points, 56 points, three straight losses. But then they really turned it around. It seemed like they turned it around in what really unseated Kansas State, a number one team in the country last year. And then Coleman some work. He picks up the first down. But, but then it was the bowl game. It was versus UCLA, a physical offense, and they shut the Bruins completely down in that bowl game. They ran the football with authority, and defensively, they gave them nothing. Stopped that ground game. Jonathan Franklin got nothing in that ball game. And I think that's really when they started to believe and realize how important it was to play in both phases. You don't want to end up like West Virginia did a year ago, just putting up ridiculous numbers, but can't stop anybody. They snap it with nine seconds left on the play clock. We rarely see that with this Baylor offense. 
As Shock Linwood gets the carry there, pickup of three. And again, eight officials used in the Big 12 this year. And that was granted by the NCAA Rules Committee because the Big 12 wanted to keep up with the fast tempo offenses, specifically Baylor. And Art Bryles was more than happy to see that happen because now his offense can go even faster. Offense can go faster, he can run more plays, he get more penalties. Linwood changes directions, tries to bounce to the outside, steps out of a tackle. He'll get a couple as Morrissey finally brings him down again at two. Baylor's practices are faster than their game tempo. And tonight, their average touchdown drive is ahead of their season average. Well, you're doing it in one play. How long can it possibly take? Seth Russell runs one snap and he's in the end zone. He didn't have that far to go. Surely it didn't take him a minute and a half. I can't imagine watching a Baylor practice. If they run faster than they do it in the game. Russell dancing around, looking for a lane. Gets to the outside and he gets the first down. And he slides down at the 47. I like Seth Russell. Well, he's certainly mobile. You see how elusive he is. Oh, nowhere to go downfield. You know, part of that may be a function of not being used to being in the, in the offense as much, although he's gotten plenty of snaps. But keeps the play alive and picks up the first. The 29th first down for the Bears tonight. Compared to the six that Iowa State has collected. I'm gonna burn some clock here. Seven and a half to go. Incomplete. Jevin Miller, linebacker, is in the vicinity of really picking that football off. It looked like Corey Fuller was ready for that one, but you know, Paul Rhodes, he's got a tough second half of the season in front of him. He's got a lot. This might have to be his best coaching job yet. They've been pleased with how this team has reacted under tough circumstances. They could have had a season-changing victory versus Texas, a controversial call at the end. He said it wasn't a fumble. That could have been the difference in the season for them. Russell is set. Jeremiah George. The only thing working against him that's keeping the NFL scouts from banging down his door is his size. He's 5'11", 219, but everything else seems to be there for George. He's got a nose for the ball. You know, he was the one that was in there on, on the would-be fumble. He could have secured victory over Texas. You say Jonathan Gray's forward progress was over. You know, that, that's something that a, a team like this that started out so slowly could have pointed to and said, look, there's the victory. This is the redeeming victory for this season. Maybe the best rant we've seen all season, too, from Paul Rhodes after that thing was over. This one is complete. Clay Fuller. First down, Baylor. Into positive territory. 17-yard reception for Fuller. Paul Rhodes is the king of the post-game press conference rant. He's never lost a press conference. I haven't seen him yet. When he gets at the podium, everything he says is solid gold. Is that an official NCAA staff? It should be. He's undefeated in the post-game rant. I mean, it is inspiring. How, how do you, in a loss like that, the way it happened, you know, he kept it about as, as diplomatic as you could and still get your point across. Jack Linwood rips off 12 more as we go under six minutes. You know, it, that's probably the one time we've really seen him lose his cool, though, this year. Most of the time, he's in a pretty good humor. Despite everything that's gone on, he really stays on the sunny side of the street. Well, even then, you know, it wasn't venomous, per se. It was in defense of his team. You know, so they're talking about, what do I tell my kids? You can tell that that's a coach that cares about his team and the team that cares about their coach. And we've seen it evidence on the sideline and a blowout loss. Nothing has gone right for Iowa State tonight. And he's coaching, and his players are taking the coaching. Caught. Jay Lee immediately wrapped up, but still a five-yard pickup. 
Paul Rhodes in year number five. And again, it's a long shot for bowl eligibility this year. After tonight, they're going to be one and five, zero oh and three in the Big 12. But the future looks bright because a lot of young players are getting experience. 20 first-time starters this year, and now you can throw Rojas in there getting experience for the first time tonight, the backup quarterback. That's about two yards short of the first down, a carry for Devin Chafin, his first of the night for Baylor. Uh, you can make book that that coaching staff at Iowa State, those players, they're not going to punt on this season. And at the same time, you know, when you look forward to your point, you're going to have a different football team next year for these guys, more experienced football team, a veteran team. They'll be better in some key areas, and if they can avoid the injuries that they've already sustained this season, it was totally different prospects for the Cyclones in 2014. Russell stops. Short, great second effort. And he's going to be down about a half yard short of the first down. And they're going to go for it. 14th play of the drive, first down, Devin Chafin, touchdown. And Baylor is up over its season average for points per game. It's 64 to nothing now. They came into the night averaging 63.4. Paul Rhodes checking the big screen. They're up a ton of points, go for it on fourth down, and you end up in the end zone. That's blocked. That's a live football. Iowa State could pick it up and go back for two, but Tribune is down. So it's 64 to nothing with 3.48 to go here. That was their longest drive of the night. Seven minutes, 11 seconds on 14 plays. Four to nothing, Baylor. Wrangler five-star player of the game. And it's Bryce Petty, 23 of 31, 343, a couple of touchdowns, also ran for one. Pretty sporty numbers, huh? It ain't perfect, though. That's what he's going to hear from his head coach. He wants even more out of his quarterback. A couple of overthrows, you know. There's probably a few reads where they want more out of Bryce Petty. But they got to like what they're getting at the quarterback position. He's the hub of what they're doing. Yeah, those numbers that high and that good, considering the fact that he hasn't even played most of the second half. And Iowa State will have the football at about the 42-yard line with 3.43 to go. Back in a moment. Chase for the Sprint Cup stops at Talladega on Sunday. With five races left. Matt Kenseth leading Jimmy Johnson by four points. And Kevin Harvick, Harvick, excuse me, by 29. NASCAR Sprint Cup Series at Talladega presented by Five Hour Energy Sunday at 1 on ESPN. Now this Baylor offense could run in the NASCAR circuit, I think, and do just fine. <laughs> nah, because they can turn right. <laughs> End up in the wall. Rohatch, complete. Ernst Brunn, the tight end, first catch for Brunn tonight. He had six touchdowns last year, but he's been hampered by injuries this season. Who hasn't for Iowa State? Give him 19. They're still fighting these Cyclones. They've got it at the 38-yard line now of Baylor. They don't want to be shut out on the road. John Trell Johnson dumped for a loss of one by Sean Oakman, who has had a nice game tonight. 
He is 6'9", 270. There's a poster of him down in the concourse just to show off his wingspan, which is about seven feet tall. Yeah, it was pretty frightening, actually. I was intimidated on the way to the press box just looking at that guy. You can imagine what he looks like when he's in a three-point stance. Make sure the linebackers don't trip over his feet he's so long. Grant Rohatch, draw play. Johnson, good run. Bring up third and manageable. Even if the Cyclones can get a field goal here, be something that they can take into that Oklahoma State game next week in Ames. Some, some momentum, something positive. <laughs> it's been a it's been a tough night for these Iowa State Cyclones. Maybe momentum was the wrong word. Jeff Woody in the backfield on third and two. Bibbs drops short by Brody Trahan, the weak side linebacker. And it's going to be fourth down, about a yard with a minute 52 to go, clock winding. Uh, Bibbs just needed to get upfield. He was so close to converting it. We're having to substitute tackles. And they run a guy off the football field with injury. You see Lichtenberg coming in there, number 69. They're just rotating guys in, injured during the drive. They got it. First down, Jeff Woody, to keep this drive alive. Iowa State has all of its timeouts left. Baylor has not shut out a conference opponent since Texas Tech here in 1985. 31 to nothing that night old Southwest Conference days trying to do that here against Iowa State a minute to go Rohatch gets away man open caught and Devondrick Neely with the 27-yard touchdown grab, and Baylor's shutout goes away. Only something to smile about if you're wearing the red of the Iowa State Cyclones. There's Paul Rhodes. Every team has to have something to point to when they come away from a football game. You know, in this one, it's got to be more than we just hung tough. We finally got in the end zone and kept chipping away. Cole Netton, the extra point, the first-year kicker. And Iowa State gets off the schneid. Rojas does a good job keeping this play alive. He's just able to buy just enough time. You see Devondre Neely just snip out of that backfield. Gets behind the coverage. First career touchdown pass for Rojas. Neely the catch. The last time Baylor started a season 6-0, Mike Singletary was playing for Baylor. The intensity of those eyes, you can see it. Those black and white shots. All-American back in the late 70s. And Baylor. will match a 77-year-old program record with a 10th straight win tonight. They set a new team record with a 6th straight Big 12 win. And they're going to go to 6-0. 3-0 in the Big 12. Turn for Coleman. <laughs> 
Sierra Bryles. Just the old Gatorade bucket. Maybe it was water, who knows now. They probably had a Gatorade. There weren't so many plays. Those guys get over there and make sure they're hydrated. We see a little bit of everything in this ball game. And outside of one touchdown, it's been all Baylor. And just piling on points. Do the takeaways. You see Phil Bennett in that shot too. He's just looking over there to the other sideline. Nodding his head. You know, as a defensive coach, there's got to be a little bit conflicting emotions, you know, when you see an offense that can pile up points like this. Because you know, you've got a lot of respect for your counterparts as well. And uh, hey, you know what? You know, sometimes you've got to stop guys. I don't think there's any disrespect in this ball game. And the schedule, as you alluded to earlier, Matt, gets much more intense. As you look at the three straight opponents that are ranked right now, Oklahoma, Texas Tech, and Oklahoma State all lie ahead. Not to mention TCU and Texas on the back end. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be real tough for this Baylor team to stay undefeated. Well, Baylor's good. They're very good. They're even better at home. They're now 17-1 and one since 2011 at home, but they're 3-7 and seven away. But you look at the way this schedule lays out, they get Oklahoma at home. They got Texas Tech. They'll play that in Jerry World over in Arlington. Oklahoma State comes to them, but Baylor took care of Oklahoma State last year. There's opportunity for them to finish in the season finale if they continue to improve. If that man there, Phil Bennett, if his unit continues to improve, they might be able to get a signature victory over a Texas in their season finale here in their home stadium. Might be enough to give them the bounce in the BCS stands. Aaron Wimberly with that 65-yard return earlier stop. And the 23 this time. So a punt return touchdown, a kickoff return touchdown now for Baylor. Again, not like that offense needs a ton of help to score points, but the special teams has been impressive as well tonight for the Bears. Special teams, you know, defense, there's very little to point to offensively. What more would you want? That man, our brows, he's got a lot to smile about. You know, this is a team that, you know, a year ago, you know, they get a loss versus West Virginia, and all of a sudden the wheels get real wobbly, and they start to slide four games in a row. You know, this year, they remain undefeated. They were tested last week, and this was a decisive victory, a well-rounded one at that. Art Bryles ready to make his way across the field to shake Paul Rhodes' hand. And he can now. Baylor, 714 yards of offense. Exactly what they've been averaging per game this year. Baylor now 6-0, 3-0 in the Big 12. They've won 10 straight, six straight Big 12 games. Both program high, 71-7. to We'll be back in a moment with more from Waco. But first, we send it to Matt Schick in the studio. Thank you, Clay. For the fourth time this season, Baylor cracks the 70-point mark. Fifth time this season, they've scored 69 or more, and they do it against Iowa State in, in incredible fashion. Magic Jason Seahorn and Charles Arbuckle. I don't know what more there is to say. Let, let's try it here about this Baylor offense. Why is this so tough to defend, I, I game think, in, game out? I think because they put people in so many places. When you have space to work with as an offensive uh, mine. You can put players into it. They, they space the field. So you've got this big, wide old open field. They find a way to get receivers, tight ends, backs into all those spaces. And just when you think as a defense you've kind of got that market covered, they run with Lake Sea So they've got so many options on offense. They keep coming at you so quickly. I think that's the advantage they have. Lake Sea Strunk over 100 yards. Antoine Goodley 100 yards more. Tevin Reese receiving. These guys just do it all kind of different ways. You can't stop them. And a great chance to move into the top 10 with some of the upsets we saw today. It'd be the first time in 22 years we've seen that in Baylor. Back out to Waco, Don Davenport. 
Coach, offensively, you said you wanted to see more out of your team. You got 71 points. Did you see it? Well, you know, we had a couple of special teams touchdowns, which are always huge. And then the defense played outstanding tonight. And we kind of got on the roll there late in the second quarter and carried over through the third. But, yeah, our guys came with a lot of energy, and, and we really felt like we were playing for a purpose tonight. And, and I'm really proud of the way they played. That defense basically just a touchdown away, you know, a late touchdown away from a shutout. What did you learn about them? Well, I mean, just what we've known all along. I mean, those guys are good. They do a great job over there, Coach Bennett and his staff. We got eight, eight returners back from last year, and they're experienced, and they know how to win. So we've got a complete football team. Hey, look ahead. Still a lot of tough teams left on that schedule. What do you focus on moving forward? Beating Kansas next week at Kansas. That's all we see right now. It's going to be tough up there in Lawrence. All right. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate, Thank you, it. Appreciate it. Matt.